Hey YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today I am posting a much requested video on how I ink on a Procreate. Now every time I post a Procreate image uh, digital sketch on Instagram I get a ton of questions so I thought it would be easiest to make a short little video. Well this didn't turn out to be exactly short at 13 minutes but I thought it would be good to just have a video that um, could answer and respond to all of your questions. I also want to say that I will be posting a time lapse of this sketch on my Patreon for my patrons as a secret little video. So if you want to check that out, be sure to click the link below for my Patreon and see if that's something you want to sign up for. But if you're not a patron, don't fret because at the end of this video, I'm going to be doing a little giveaway. So be sure to stay tuned till the very end. One of the biggest questions I get when it does come to my iPad Pro and Procreate is what size iPad Pro I use. And I use a 12.9 inch, so that is the biggest size. And honestly, I wanted the bigger size just because I need a lot of drawing space. It just helps me, I don't know, work with the whole illustration. However, that's really just a personal preference and I know a lot of people who love the smaller size, mostly because it's just more portable and lighter. And let me tell you, the big iPad Pro is actually very heavy. Um, I didn't think it was or notice it was until I put it in my backpack and it really weighed me down. I do want to answer a question that I always get when I post anything about Procreate is what brush I use. Now I do use brushes from George Brushes on Cellify. I added the link below, but for this one I use the pencil brush which actually comes with Procreate. So nothing fancy here, just whatever Procreate offers in the very beginning. But enough about Procreate, I do want to talk about what I'm drawing now. One of my things on the list of things I need to improve on in 2018 was clothing and costume design. I really wanted to do a study with a sketch, but I got really carried away. I was using a reference photo from an old portrait painting from the 1800s, especially for the hands and the folds in the fabric. With my characters, I usually don't focus too heavily on clothing, which is something I really want to improve on, especially since historical fashion has been such an inspiration to me in the past. I actually got a big giant book of historical fashion, I'll leave a link to it below, and have been just immersed in it lately. The clothing of a certain era can create such a mood or a feeling in a piece, and that's something I desperately want to bring into my own art. When it came to this piece, I definitely wanted to give the mood of peace and serenity, maybe a bit of meditation, uh, something I've been working on for myself in 2018 and kind of showed up in this illustration as well. Later on in the video, you will see that I add an arrow shooting through her chest, and this doesn't necessarily represent an arrow going through her chest, but more of a metaphor for emotions or feelings. I got the idea from a Cupid's bow, you know, Cupid shooting the arrow through the heart to make people fall in love. Well, I kind of went off that fact, but a little different just to represent any emotion. So when I draw arrows in my art, it usually represents some sort of strong feeling or emotion, not necessarily the death of someone. <laughs> I also gave her a crown of flowers. This I do a lot in my art to represent femininity or grace. I also just like the look of flowers. I like the connection to nature and the beauty in nature and all things. Mm -hmm. 
Going into more of the process of inking on Procreate, my biggest recommendation for any digital inking is to kind of just go for it. Don't sit and slowly draw a line, just kind of go through it fast, rush it. If it doesn't make a good line, that's fine. You can control Z and get rid of it magically. So just kind of let it flow, let it look natural. Don't make it harsh or um, too thought out because then your lines will get shaky and stiff. That's why I tend to consider these sketches instead of full-on illustrations, mostly because they're not very planned out or, you know, designed. It's just kind of whatever happens on the page. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you know, that's fine. I'll move on to the next one, which I really like in art. I really like the idea of sometimes just going for things. I tend to work in black and white just because it gives it sort of a traditional or maybe vintage feel. It makes it look more graphic, but still nice. So I tend to stick with that. I do like adding color and I think for 2018, I do want to add a lot more color. This was just something that I didn't plan for it to happen this way, but it did and I'm happy with the way it came out. So next time, and probably for future videos, you will see a lot more color. I do want to say that the best thing about working with black and white is you really get a good understanding for the composition and knowing how to contrast and draw the eye around the page. You can also cut away at the black, which is another good feature, especially on digital. So you can just block in a big piece of black and then go back in it with some white and really cut out the silhouette you're looking for. favorite thing about this piece is definitely the silhouette. Uh, the 1800s was all about go big or go home when it came to dresses and it's something I never really try because I always want to get more of um, a shapely body figure and this took me way out of my comfort zone which was really nice and I really enjoyed it a lot and it's something I definitely want to experiment more with in the future. <laughs> I hope you guys like this video. I definitely tried to 
talk more in it, cover a little bit more subjects than just the process. Uh, I got a few comments on my last video that says I should talk more and I'm doing my best, but I think for the next video, I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave it in a comment down below. I will write it down and get to it on my next video. So that way I can plan everything out and <laughs> know what to say instead of kind of just winging it like I did this time around. Also, I did want to talk about the giveaway I'm doing this time, and I got a nice 8x10 print, the first of its edition of this illustration, and I will be giving it away to one of you guys in the comments. So all you have to do is subscribe to me, like this video, and send a nice little comment down below, and I will pick a winner and contact them next week. I will also have prints of this illustration in different sizes, so if you don't want to wait for a giveaway, just check the shop link below and get yours now. I hope you guys liked this video and enjoyed the format. If you did, be sure to let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye!